One of my lovely patrons sent me this model today. He told me he's having trouble with this model because the more he works on it, the more details that he adds, it seems like the topology gets messier, the edges get messier, okay? So he wanted to get a couple of tips for how to clean this thing up a little bit, all right? Now, when I looked at this model, I was thinking to myself, well, it's really not bad at all, okay? It can be better, but he's definitely on the right path, okay? So we're going to talk about a few things that he could do to this model to make it to make the edges flow a little bit better, just to make shit a little bit more organized so that it's going to look a bit cleaner, okay? Let me give you the first example of what I noticed that he could do, okay? This thing down here, I don't know what this is on a car. I think it's like an intake or something. Maybe something for aerodynamics. I don't know what, he's, what this part is for. But if you look over here on the corners, you get these kind of folds, all right? You get these lines that go out from the corners, all right? And this is obviously not supposed to be there. The reason this is there is because of how the topology is formed, okay? I redid this shape really quickly in a different style, and then I achieved this where you don't have those folds, okay? It's just a very simple trick. It's just very simply about how you arrange the topology of how you create this shape, okay? The reason these folds are there or the reason these lines are there is because he has these edge loops like this, okay? So he inset this face. I'm thinking he inset this face to get this. And then he just ran some loop cuts this way. And now there you have tight loops or edges which are tightly packed together on these little corners. And then you get these weird shading issues, okay? Now I redid this in a different style where the edges and the faces were a little bit more evenly distributed. And shout out to Thomas Cole in 3D, okay? I think he would appreciate this style a little bit better. But if you do this style, you're not going to have any kind of edges here. And you can do, redo this shape in like two minutes, okay? I don't know, I'm not going to speed run it or time it, but it's really easy to do this. It's just, you know, a slightly different way of doing it, okay? Here's how I did this. I looked at this front thing down here. And I wanted to keep the exact shape, all right? I didn't want to reshape it from scratch because then I'm going to have to follow the blueprint. Then I'm going to have to make sure the measurements are exact. I don't want to do all that. It's very simple. I selected this shape. I took the bottom edge loop and I took the top edge loop. I duplicated them and then I moved them forwards a little bit. And I'll just separate that as a new object because now I can have these two lines and I can work on them from scratch, okay? And then I, now I just want to bridge the edge loops on this. Because when I bridge the edge loops, it's going to give me like this nice surface, which has exactly the same shape as this surface over here. Okay, if you would look at it from the top view, the line would look exactly the same. This is why we duplicated this, is why we're filling it, except it doesn't have these holes. We're going to do those from scratch. Now, once we've done this, I'm going to get rid of some of these edges over here, which we don't need. Okay, because some of these edges here are necessary with a subdivision surface modifier because they shape the object. This one's a little bit out of control down here. I think it's because I removed some loops, but we can just move this one over here. We're going to remove some of the edges that we don't need. Now, this is a corner, but these edges are here to shape the object with a subdivision surface modifier, right? If we move this, this becomes a bit smoother. If we move it closer, the edge here becomes a bit tighter. But this one over here is a little bit further back. We already have an edge separating this angle. Uh, this edge over here is the one that defines the shape. This one's in the back. We can get rid of this one, okay? And I'm just gonna get rid of some of the other edges over here, which I don't really need, okay? This one defines the shape. I'm gonna keep that one. And this is one is extra. I can also just get rid of that one really quick, all right? Just make it really simple. Try to reduce it as much as possible because the less edges you have, the easier it is to shape stuff, all right? And now once we've done that, I'm going to apply one level of subdivision to this, all right? Just one level, control A, and I'll make it like this. And once I've done that, now I confirm the shape to make it like round like this, all right? So now we, we confirm the edges which make these uh, corners over here a bit smooth, all right? So we've added those in. Now this is destructive. And now once we have the shape for how this is supposed to be bent, now it's smooth. Right? Before the subdivision surface modifier, we just had very simply... You see there's one corner here, there's a corner here. It's not very smooth, okay? But then when we add one subdivision, and we apply that, now it's smooth and now this is more or less the shape that we're supposed to have here, okay? We can make it a bit smoother later, but as long as we have the shape defined, that's good. And once we apply that, we need to have some more geometry. So I'm gonna add some loop cuts like this until I get to a point where it's more or less squares, okay? It doesn't have to be exact. Don't worry about it too much. 
but see these are definitely not squares this is a rectangle then you got this other type of shape over here but if you just add a couple of loop cuts you're going to have much nicer geometry here okay these are much more evenly distributed so now once we've done that I'm not going to do it in the front because I'm not trying to model anything there. But if you're trying to attach something here, you're going to want to go for the same. But I'm going to go to front view. And I align this with the shape in the back because that's the one I'm trying to remodel. And I'm going to select some of these faces over here which define or which are outside of this hole that we have here. So we're looking at this hole over here. It starts from here and it ends here. And over here you can see the edges that outline this hole here. Okay in the background and I'm going to select all the faces which cover that area okay maybe I'll move this edge to the side a little bit like this so we have some extra space but I'll select all of these faces and that's going to allow me to once again inset this but it's going to work better this way all right so when I inset this and I think I can even get rid of this one for now I can get rid of this edge because I don't need it at all it doesn't define the shape in any way okay and we also fucked something up back here this is not supposed to be round so we should have kept that in mind before we applied the subdivision surface modifier. But now we're just going to correct it really quick. We got rid of this edge because we don't really need it. It's only going to get in the way for now. So we're going to take these faces which are around this hole. And we're going to inset them until we have the right length from here to over here. And we can slide this edge inwards a little bit to get the right shape on this side. Now, this is the basic shape for this hole. So this hole is such that... You have to inset it once, or you have to extrude it inwards once first, first to get to this part. And then you make two more holes and you just continue pushing them backwards to get the rest of this hole in the back here, okay? So I'll take this uh, surface that we just inset, I'll extrude it backwards a little bit, okay, on the y-axis, just so I get to this first part, to this length, to this distance, all right? That's going to be somewhere over here. And now that I have this, I can remove these two edges. I'll make a vertical cut with the knife tool. And let me enable my screen gas keys. I probably should have done this earlier. Now you guys are going to tell me, oh, Arjen, what shortcut are you using here? What shortcut are you using there? And it's going to be the, the simplest shit. And I'm going to have to answer like 25 different comments for this shit. Just because I didn't uh, open my screen gas keys. But anyway, if, if anything is unclear, just let me know in the comments. I'll help you out. I use my knife tool with K. And I'll cut straight through this shit on the z-axis. I'll press C so I cut through as well. We're going to hit enter. And now when we bevel this, the lines are going to keep the same direction. Okay. So they're not going to be bent according to. See, if you use a loop cut, a loop cut is going to conform to the edges around it. It's going to take their shape. It's going to it's going to turn to an angle, right? You see now it's a bit crooked this way. If I bring it over here, now suddenly it's straight. All right. So loop cuts are not reliable in that sense. But if you bevel this, the lines are not going to depend on the shape around them much, okay? The lines are still pretty fucking straight when you bevel this, which is perfect for this little pillar thing that we have in the middle, okay? And now that we have this, this is where we're going to have this stick thing, and we can take the faces around it, extrude them, and just push them backwards a little bit more, all right? And I'm going to keep in mind that this thing is kind of going inwards, so let's make sure we do that first, okay? this is We're going to have to slide this a little bit like this, and then the rest of these faces, we can push the back some more. I think I'm going to make them rather, try to make them a bit more even on the y-axis because then I'm going to be able to move this. Now, that's a bit too deep. I just want to be able to move this a little bit so that it keeps the same angle, right? It's, it's supposed to be something like this, maybe a bit sharper. So I can just move some of these vertices around a little bit. I can just move some of these vertices around until I get this nice little sharp angle here okay i'm not gonna spend too much time on this but you understand the idea if you want to make it more bent you can do that and now i just have to delete the faces in the back to get the hole not these i'm going to delete the faces at the bottom because this way when i apply another subdivision surface modifier all right this is going to be a sharp cut and the only thing missing here is we have to shape this properly so i can add like two or three loop cuts here and two or three loop cuts over here and maybe another another one or two up here just to define this a little bit better okay because i want to still keep the part uh, keep the property of just having like evenly sized squares all over the place okay i don't want to have a rectangle here and a square there that's generally a principle that you want to follow 
if you're working with organic stuff where topology really matters okay then it's going to be much easier to add details okay just subdivide stuff until everything is more or less the same size of a tile okay see here we have a little square here we got a little square here we got a little square you won't have any part maybe over here although this is unnecessary because we're not really working on this so we don't have to do that but with the part where you're attaching more details try to make the topology more or less even okay so now that we have this look at that smooth shading all right maybe we got to correct the normals a little bit and maybe you want to push these a little bit forward these are little details that everybody knows already so i'm not going to split hairs but if i attach this back to the car if i attach it back to the car we basically have the exact same shape more or less right maybe you want to shape this at a slightly different angle maybe you want to make it a little thicker a little bit wider but anyway the idea is that it's the same shape except without these folds over here and the reason is because we don't have these bent lines and our topology is a lot cleaner okay so anytime you're doing anything especially with organic modeling or subdivision surface modeling i don't want to say anytime you're doing anything because that would be a hypocrite because when i make hard surface stuff like tanks i don't give a fuck about this type of stuff okay because i don't really care about having end gones sometimes or perfectly clean topology i don't really care if there's some minor stuff like this because it doesn't really matter if you're not using a subdivision surface workflow but here we are using a subdivision surface workflow so this stuff is pretty important okay so you want to keep your topology uniform all right and that's one thing that i've noticed and the other thing that i'd quickly like to say is i want to comment on this the shape of this kind of what do you call this part like the mud guard the part around the wheel this part over here again we have a similar problem because the topology is not uniform but if you notice this with a subdivision surface modifier it's not very smooth okay and the reason it's not very smooth is because we have like look let me let me demonstrate why it's how it's not perfectly smooth because it's kind of hard to see from over here it looks pretty round from here right but if you extrude this inwards like this okay you're gonna see that it's not exactly smooth okay it's like there's a little dent there and there's a little dent up here and we're going to correct this okay if we compare this to something which is perfectly smooth which i'm quickly going to set up over here all right if we compare this to much smoother shape just because of the topology difference you're going to see over here in the reflections with our mat cap and by the way this is why i recommend using mat caps because they can show you your bends a lot better they can show you imperfections on the surface a lot better whereas if you're just using studio shading it's a lot harder to see the differences okay if you use something shiny like this now you can see when there's some imperfections when there's shading issues and shit like this okay maybe we got to do this a couple more times we have 25 iterations loop tool space i'll show you in a second what i'm doing here but what i'm trying to show you is this surface is not perfect okay you can see these little dips these little kind of dents in the middle you don't want to have this okay because it's not smooth it's a car it's supposed to be perfectly smooth it's supposed to look beautiful it's not supposed to be it looks like somebody took a fucking baseball bat and whacked it on the rim right we don't want this and the simple problem is that it's basically the same as having a circle imagine if you have a circle with eight vertices you subdivide it and now if you subdivide it it's eight vertices but they're perfectly evenly distributed so when you subdivide it it's still a perfect circle but if you add a loop cut here then you add two loop cuts here then you add another two loop cuts here now it's not a circle anymore okay even though if you look at it from edit mode it's still just an octagon right but the problem is that just these edge loops they kind of tighten they tighten the corners which are subdivided all right it's the same thing that happens when you got a cube which you subdivide but when you add a loop cut now this part is tighter because this, it's only subdivided between this edge and over here right you can also do it like this and like this it's the same concept okay so the more topology or the more geometry the more vertices you have around an area around the corner like this it's going to get tight right it's not smooth anymore it just kind of gets tighter over here and it's kind of stuttery that's exactly what's happening over here so we have a nice straight line over here then we got a corner over here but there's a the vertex over here shit's not evenly distributed okay it's not very smooth there's like inconsistencies in, in the distribution of the uh, topology of the vertices okay and the, this is where your loop tools become invaluable okay because the only way that i can think of how to fix this up is using your loop tools all right if you don't have your loop tools activated just go to preferences 
edit preferences add-ons and just type in loop tools it's a built-in add-on which makes it a lot easier to organize shit okay just click this box and you're good to go and now you can select this and you basically have tools here which control how your your geometry is distributed i have a tutorial on every single one of the loop tools which you can find here with w loop tools different operations i got a tutorial if you just type in aryan blender loop tools you're gonna find a tutorial i don't want to be putting fucking pictures on the screen or anything like that and i'm probably gonna forget to put a link in the description anyway so just look it up you'll find it if you press w with this edge loop selected okay w loop tools space is a tool which is just going to take all the edges and it's going to make them equally long okay now in this case it looks a little bit messy because of the part that we selected but it, it is a little bit smoother already so here's how we're going to do this to optimize it all right and the other tool that we're going to use in a second is going to be relax and that just takes vertices which are kind of sharp like if you can see over here they're kind of sharp and it's going to make it a little bit of a smoother transition between them and we're going to combine the both you can play around with it yourself but i'm going to try to do it my way and i'm going to deselect this edge down here at the bottom because this one's obviously a lot shorter than the ones up here so if we consider this one in the space tool every this one is also going to have to be made a lot longer and it might mess up with everything else a little bit so we don't want that one to take part in the even distribution but still it doesn't really make it much nicer okay the reason it doesn't make it much nicer is because now this is evenly distributed and this stuff here is not and this is where it's really important to have what we talked about earlier what we, we said you should try to have your topology evenly distributed because otherwise you get problems like this okay now right now we have edges coming from here from here from here because when creating this, you have to keep in mind that, yeah, you should probably keep your topology pretty evenly distributed, like over here. And then you're going to be able to extrude parts on the side over here, which are going to have even topology. And that way, when you use your loop tools, you're going to use your space loop tool, you're going to use your relax loop tool, you're going to set your number of iterations to like 10. And now it's going to turn into a much smoother circle, okay? So this way, if you extrude it inwards a little bit, now you get the smoother variation of what we were talking about. You won't have those little dips anymore that look like somebody karate chopped that fucking mud guard. Okay, so try to use your loop tools to clean this shit up a little bit. I would recommend that you try redoing some of these parts using the technique that I showed you. Although I understand that unfortunately this is going to take you a lot of time. Okay, you don't have to do it unless you have clear shading issues. Like for example here, you have the same problem that I described earlier. But I think that you can remodel this using the technique that I showed you. I think in like an hour, you're going to have the same stuff that you already have. I think if you're efficient with this, probably it's going to take a little bit of practice. But trust me, this is going to allow you to do more shit in the future. So it's worth redoing this. Okay, just do it for the practice. And then when you look at it in the end, you see organic models are one of the most impressive things that you can show. Okay. When, you're, when studios are trying to hire you, they're going to test your topology. They're going to test your ability to make shit more evenly distributed and just cleaner like this, okay? If a studio is trying to hire you for something, they don't want to see this, okay? They don't want to see these little shading artifacts and they don't want to see a large, long face over here and then a tiny... They don't want to see any of that, okay? So you got to practice doing stuff like this and then you're going to have much higher quality uh, models, Okay. So I would really recommend that you apply some of these techniques on your model, okay, and clean that shit up a little bit, all right? So let me know what you guys want to see next. If you want to see more tutorials like this, if you need some feedback on your models, check out my Patreon page below. I'll see you guys in the next one.